Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the Moto X. Now this is an unlocked phone, at least in my case. This is the developer edition for Verizon Wireless, my carrier of choice. And essentially you can pick this up directly from Motorola. It'll be manufactured for you uh, right here in the USA. And you can either go with the Moto Maker, which allows you to fully customize uh, the color both on the front, back, uh, your buttons, just about everything, which is really cool. One of the unique features of this new phone is really just that, its own identity uh, and personalization. In my case, because I went with the developer edition, I am stuck with this uh, black-white finish. Not that it's awful. It is really clean. And overall, no question that the Moto X is one of the nicest phones ever made. And that's coming from me. Uh, I've been working with the Note 2 since its launch and uh, wasn't really compelled to migrate to the Note 3. I didn't see enough there, even though it is a clear improvement. The Moto X really called to me in terms of the overall experience that it brings to the table because in my opinion, you are really looking at here the Nexus 5. Yes, of course, LG has a Nexus 5 that's out uh, that is blessed by Google, but the reality is that this is manufactured by Motorola, which is owned by Google, and there are a lot of advantages to that, and it really does come across in the way this phone has been crafted head to toe. So in terms of specifications for price point, I'll get that out of the way right now. Uh, first and foremost, a 4.7 inch uh, AMOLED display. This isn't a super AMOLED, uh, but in my opinion, it's definitely one of the better ones on the market. Only 720p here. We're not looking at one of those brand new high res 1080p displays, and that's because Moto did their research, I'll even say Google, even though again they keep uh, everything separate here despite the fact that Google owns it, uh, they are persistent on reminding all of us that they are still independent, at least in terms of the product we're looking at here, but it's hard to believe considering uh, how much this resembles a Nexus experience. Uh, so a 4.7 inch display, 720p, you've got a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, which even though it's an S4 Pro, it really resembles in terms of architecture and performance, literally, the S600. Uh, so a relatively strong performer there under the hood, much like the uh, Nexus 7 tablet 2013 that I covered. Uh, so more than competent in terms of today's uh, space of processing for mobile computing. Two gigs of RAM, uh, both a front-facing camera right there in the upper right corner, uh, rated at 2 megapixels, as well as a 10 megapixel camera on the back with an LED flash. You can see the speakerphone to the right of it, uh, which is physically clearly the left when the phone is actually reversed. Uh, some microphones all around the handset, uh, micro USB charger right there. Uh, the mics are all about noise cancellation, something that Motorola has been very good with throughout the history of the company. Uh, your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack right there, complemented by yet another microphone. Uh, some sensors up there at the top of the device, which aren't going to come through, I don't think, in this video, but I'll get as close as I can and focus and hope for all of you that you can actually see it rather than just uh, the skin on my fingers, which even I can see right now, uh, that HD really coming through. Either way, uh, great display, incredible battery life, of course, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi that is dual band, uh, AC, something that you're not necessarily going to find in a lot of handsets, uh, which won't appeal to the masses, but for me personally, I have an AC-capable router. If I am jumping on Wi-Fi, it is something nice to be able to take advantage of. This does outperform just about everything I have when it comes to Wi-Fi. And in terms of battery life that I just mentioned, Moto says 24 hours, and they're right. In terms of real usage, you are definitely going to get through, at the very least, uh, your day. And by that, I mean when you need to actually get home and charge this thing. I'm not saying you'll go the 24 hours, uh, because that's really dependent on how you actually use the phone. I actually am able to leave this on auto brightness, believe that, believe it or not. Um, Motorola here, even though this is a form of blur, extraordinarily stock. You can see it looks just like uh, basically your Nexus 5 would look, but the benefit here is that this actually got KitKat before the Nexus 5. Yet another indication of Google clearly saying, we're going to give preferential treatment to the devices we actually manufacture and own. Uh, even though the Nexus partnership has always been about making sure that manufacturers are aware of how closely Google wants to work with them in order to be successful for both parties, this is just the first time we're seeing 
the Nexus program, at least in my opinion, even if it's not formally, really truly arrive uh, in a form that when first launched, I wasn't really impressed by. You know, it doesn't have the specifications of uh, the Nexus 5. It doesn't have that Snapdragon 800 best-in-class processor, but it has everything else. And more importantly, it's got the software uh, contextual not- uh, the contextual notification system is unmatched. Uh, the voice recognition and voice commands. Okay, Google Now. I mean, all of those things, it didn't activate there, but all of those things really do equate to this being one of the best handsets that I've ever picked up. And there was no question, uh, the Note 2 definitely was a favorite. Look, it's not even fitting in the frame. Let me take this out a little bit wider. And it really is still one of the better phones ever made. But when it comes to the bugs that I've experienced with this phone, and every device has bugs, I don't care what what sort of fanboy you are or you know what OS you are dedicated to, whether it's Android, iOS, or even Windows for the, that minority that exists, there are bugs. Everybody is in some form of a beta. This is a fluid experience. This entire mobile computing uh, development or industry is entirely fluid all the time and the software reflects it Uh, when it comes to what we're running here of course here I'm stuck on Jelly Bean here I've got KitKat and as I mentioned before the Nexus 5 in terms of stability KitKat has been a pleasure performance has gotten better battery life better signal strength has increased Uh, even though the focus of this video hasn't been about KitKat uh, that has been the transition I've noticed Uh, for the most part in terms of just overall benefits uh, in a day-to-day use fashion. But the Note 2 had bugs that I just don't have here when it came to GPS, inverting my positioning, uh, all sorts of things that really just out of the box for the average user who, who is not going to do what I've done with this phone, which is unlock it as I paid to be able to do without voiding my warranty, you know, root it, be able to flash whatever I want to it. Uh, that's not something I did with the Note 2 because out of the box it works really, really well. And you've got this gigantic screen, uh, Super AMOLED, really nice and just a great, just a pleasure, a great device to use. And the cameras on here are really solid. That's one thing where I'll say in comparison to the Moto X. Uh, some people could argue that the 8 megapixel shooter on this is actually better uh, than the 10 megapixel sensor on the Moto X, but I'm not really buying a phone as many of you may imagine who follow my channel and actually subscribe for camera taking capability. Now, in no way do I mean that uh, we should have to buy phones that are horrible at that task. Uh, And the Moto X isn't terrible, it's just disappointing because all these compliments I've paid it about uh, overall performance and, and build quality, by the way, also stellar. I don't love the fact that I can't remove the battery and there's no micro SD card slot. Uh, But that all, again, speaks to the Nexus experience when you think about it. I mean, that is what Google is going for. So they've delivered it here, and they've just done a great job. Even the Moto logo really acts as a little resting spot, uh, or I shouldn't say resting spot, but but a pivot to hold the phone in your palm. Again, that's going to really depend on how large your hand is, but it's a small device, you know, and that's been something I've been embracing, getting accustomed to uh, my first few days away from... Uh, the Note 2 were a little bit difficult. You know, all of a sudden I'm looking at something that almost, I mean, it's just from another era already at this point uh, because the Note brand and the phablet popularity has been around for over two years now. So this did seem initially to be a de-evolution for me, but as I started to use the phone, as I saw what performance was like, uh, the actual contextual notifications is one of the biggest draws. You know, if the phone is basically face down and you pick it up, it It's aware. It is actually aware. And then you swipe down to unlock, but if I had a text message there, I would swipe up to get quick access to that or any email, whatever the notification is. So that already is a really cool thing that is simple. Uh, Even things like the alarm clock, and I have told this to many people already, and some people will think this is a joke, but if you're used to TouchWiz and the overlay that Samsung delivers, this is a refreshing uh, escape from that. Uh, So to set something like a timer, couldn't be more straightforward, but let's talk about alarms, what most of us use. And if I wanted to adjust my alarm time here, clearly easy to turn it on and off, but the actual time, just look at how easy it is to do this. And I know this is nothing new, but something this simple, and it, it is vital when you're using a phone on a day-to-day basis, especially 
and I think many of us do rely on this as our first primary means for alarm clock. I mean, I do in most instances. Uh, here you've got just such a simple way to select it. So first you're just going to pick your hour and then your minute, AM, PM. You're done. I mean, this is so much better, such a vast improvement from what TouchWiz offers. And I know this sounds like nitpicking. It's a little thing, but these simple little things are the type of things that when you see such a clear improvement and a case very much so of, you know, the simple way often is the best, here we've got it. And that's what Google is really good at. Uh, so as much as Moto will continue to maintain that Google didn't put their hands on this device, it's really clear to me that this is their first true Nexus phone, uh, despite all the Nexus uh, devices that have come before it. And unlike many of those Nexus devices, this has incredible radios. That's in part to Motorola's uh, own manufacturing record. Anyone who's been a Moto fan, like myself included, even though I've spent some time away from the company with my stint with Samsung uh, for the last couple of years, uh, now I'm back. And one benefit immediately that I noticed was improved reception uh, for my LTE service with Verizon. So uh, I am getting better speeds with this device than with the Note 2, uh, better GPS performance. So all of the radios, Wi-Fi, that's one area where it does tear Samsung up and in build quality, you know, as much as the Note 2 is an unmatched device, that's really great. And it does take a quite a licking. I will point that out and give credit to the Note 2. This thing's been beaten up to the hilt. Of course, you can always replace these book covers or the back cover uh, you've got micro uh, SD card slot for storage expansion underneath as well as a replaceable battery. So those are big advantages for Samsung's products. But uh, when it just comes to having a phone that I'm going to enjoy using, uh, the Moto X has proven to be the better of the two for those of you that are curious. And when you compare it to most of the marketplace, pricing is also what makes this an incredibly competent device. You're looking at a phone that um, if you pick it up with a carrier subsidized, you'll get it anywhere from $99 to a little bit more, depending on the deal that you get on any given day. And that's a bargain. I mean, some I think it's 200 some it's 100 Republic Wireless sells this unlocked, but you're stuck with their network for $299. Um, but they do piggyback Sprint. So if you're in the right region, it might be a great deal for you. Uh, the unlocked version really is only for those of you that want to be able to unlock this thing and put ROMs on it and really have full control without voiding your warranty. That was something initially that I thought I was correct on, then incorrect, but it was in fact correct from the start. Uh, the developer edition is what it sounds like. It's protection uh, in terms of maintaining your warranty. So uh, overall, really enjoying this phone, call quality, battery life, uh, overall performance, the uh, actual internet uh, capabilities when it comes to browsing. It's one of the f uh, few phones out there where Chrome does perform uh, very competently, to say the least. Pull up a site for you right now. Let's get CNN in full screen, or f the full site mode. And you'll see it's loading up really quickly. That's in large part due to the fact that uh, Verizon does have one of the best LTE networks, no question about that. Uh, but it's just a great phone. I have no complaints. Uh, battery life has been one of the things that has impressed me the most. And yes, it's not you know a powerhouse. We're not getting a processor that's above and beyond uh, what is available available in other devices like the Nexus Five that is less expensive. Uh, I will note that, so I, I don't want to hear about complaints that I didn't mention that the Nexus Five is less expensive. It is still uh, you know it comes down to whether you pick the 16 or 32 gig version of this. On paper, there's no question that the Nexus Five looks better. Than the Moto X, but in my experience, the Moto X is the better phone, and I think that anyone who spends time with it uh, will know. Another thing I want to point out is that when I first picked this device up, the first few days I really didn't feel like I was getting anything more. You may notice that Swift key, by the way, for those of you curious what this keyboard it, a keyboard is. I do not enjoy the stock keyboard, at least compared to Swift key. Uh, with that said, the stock Android keyboard on here is still better than most in the marketplace. It's, and that's because it's just stock. But moving right along, um, when it comes to uh, the actual device in comparison to everything else out there, you really are getting a bargain uh, in terms of getting next-gen hardware performance and overall experience. And when I first got it, as I was just saying, I didn't really think that I was getting much more than what I had with the Note 2. In fact, because of the loss of screen real estate, 
I thought I was taking a step backwards, as I mentioned earlier in the video. But then after a few days, I really started to see uh, everything that this phone brought together with the voice commands. And again, just accuracy on GPS, call quality, all of those things. And as I keep repeating, battery life, because for those of you concerned with the built-in battery, don't be. You'll be fine. That's something Motorola has a great reputation with as well. And that's because overall, as a hardware manufacturer, they've been great for a while. It's been more of the execution on the software side, and that's why the marriage or ownership of Google is such a beautiful thing for this company now. And manufacturing in the U.S. should mean higher quality control, since obviously the wages are much higher paid here in the States than all the off-site uh, you know, manufacturing facilities that have been used in the past. Uh, let me go to another website. Let's try out uh, ESPN. Got the mobile, little Anchorman 2 ad. If there was any ad I would permit, it would be that. It looks like I do have to actually get rid of it. No, I didn't have to. Let's go to ESPN.com, show off that screen as best I can. I do have brightness all the way up, by the way, for those of you that are curious. No flash, of course, here in Chrome. But again, Chrome looking good. And Chrome is not one of the easier browsers for any phone to deal with. Uh, I do wish that the on-screen buttons weren't there, but that's because I'm coming from this, where I've got everything on screen and uh, a bigger screen to begin with, let alone without the on-screen buttons. So that's another thing to take into account. Um, you know, so look, it's really a compromise like anything else. Build quality is good. Battery life is good. Performance is great. There's nothing to dislike about this phone. It really just comes down to, are you more drawn to another, another device on the market uh, that arguably could be less expensive, like the uh, Nexus 5 that I'm going to continuously compare this to because I know that's what all of you are going to compare it to as well. And that's because, really, they are the two Nexus devices this year, as odd as that sounds. But overall, competent processor, Great software build right now. I'm not really experiencing any noteworthy bugs. There are a few here and there, but nothing that uh, would prevent me from recommending this phone. It's been out since the end of September, uh, so or end of August, beginning of September, so it certainly has been around. I'm sure many of you have seen it in person or know someone that owns it already, and uh, I'm sure that I'm not the first to tell you it's a game-changing device. So for those of you curious, is it possible to go from a phablet back, even though I'm in love with this device, the answer is yes. In fact, I think most of you will find that you already have enough screens you look at on a daily basis that going back to a smaller size, which arguably may be the sweet spot, of course, Motorola and Google believe it is, since uh, this phone has been optimized head to toe uh, for battery life with that screen only being 720p, AMOLED only actually finally utilizing exactly what it needs. That's part of those contextual uh, notifications and they realize that's actually more power efficient than an LED blinking. So, so much thought and R&D really poured into this phone and that's where even though it's not a beast on paper, it is an overall uh, competency and final product. Uh, so, really liking what I'm seeing so far. A full review will come eventually. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later!